Well, I really blew my load early with the Samurai Jack material in the Ghost of Tsushima review, so I don't know what I'm gonna do now. Just recently, an official Samurai Jack game has released called Samurai Jack Battle Through Time. And after that last video, you'd think I'd be more excited about it. <sighs> but sadly, no. The short version, it's disappointing. Now for the long version, it's very disappointing. So instead of explaining myself, I'm just not going to. Uh, why, why, we'll elaborate on that. No. Instead, I want to talk about the one spectacular thing that this game does that more games need to do. And that, my good sir, is dirty clothing. Well, what I actually mean is dynamic cosmetic damage. In Samurai Jack Battle Through Time, Samurai Jack starts off with his iconic clean samurai kimono. But as you take damage, so does your outfit. It may start small with a torn sleeve or two, but then half your shirt's torn off. Then you're shirtless. Then your hair falls down and dirt covers your body as you're on the brink of death. And no, he doesn't lose all his clothes. This isn't like your Samurai Jack fan fiction, all right? Your visual appearance reflects the damage you've taken, which reflects the real world. I mean, look how crappy I look because of all the mental damage I've taken. For the game, this means so much more than just a visual touch. First off, it's a wonderful way to clearly visualize your character's health without having to look down at a health bar. It's an organic way to communicate to the player how much damage they've taken and how much danger they're in. It's also a great way to satisfy the masochists in all of us. Or is that just me? Oh, so it's that kind of fan fiction. This game design philosophy is like the waypoint system in Ghost of Tsushima and how it finds diegetic ways to give out video game information to the player. And that's not all it does. It also adds to the connection between the player and the character they control, but like a purely platonic connection. One of the smartest choices they've made is that whatever cosmetic damage you've taken carries over into cutscenes. Seeing a character battered and torn during a cutscene after a genuinely challenging fight immerses the player as their struggle is now reflected upon the character. It makes each battle feel that much more intense. I like to call this the Jackie Chan effect, where seeing our hero actually get their ass kicked makes the victory that much more rewarding, just like Jackie Chan's philosophy in his action film. What's great about video games though, is that it even works the other way. It's a satisfactory reward for the player when they master the battle at hand and take no damage. The reward comes from leaving the fight literally unscathed and getting to see their untouched samurai kick ass in the cutscenes without breaking a sweat. I guess you could call that one the Neo effect. It's knowing that you could have walked out of the battle looking like crap that makes you truly feel like a master. You know you got out of that fight without getting hit and now you get to see the beautiful, and completely platonic results. I'd love to see more games adopt this kind of visual storytelling. This isn't something that's new either. Almost every racing game has utilized this system. It's normal for your car to take damage as you crash into walls or smash head on into traffic. And it's so good. Now come on, tell me you haven't seen a car crash in Burnout Paradise and felt some type of way. Just like Samurai Jack, it adds to the intensity of the race knowing that you messing up means dire consequences both mechanically and visually. This is what encourages players to drive clean in racing games. Racing games encourage us even further by giving you XP bonuses for coming out clean. So it's abundantly clear that cosmetic damage is a staple of racing games. But why not action games? Before Samurai Jack, the best example of this came from Raven Software's X-Men Origins Wolverine. Since you play as Wolverine, a man who can regenerate his body at a rapid rate, enemy attacks chew up your flesh as you fight. Bullet holes cover your character. His white tank top gets torn to pieces and he becomes shirtless. And the damage can become so massive that you start seeing your skeleton. Luckily, Wolverine's body regenerates back. It helps the player feel just as powerful as the Wolverine himself because it visualizes through the character how much of an unstoppable killing machine you are. And you get to see Hugh Jackman topless. Now that's my fanfiction. This game came out back in 2009 and was largely praised for this feature, among it also being a great game in and of itself. Now the only other games that come close to this that I know of are the Arkham games. However, their approach to cosmetic damage is entirely narrative driven. The Arkham games usually take place all in one night as Batman faces off against his greatest villains and also Calendar Man and Knuckles. This arduous battle is reflected in the bat suit, which takes more and more damage as the story progresses. Now this version of cosmetic damage isn't nearly as dynamic as the other, since the damage done is triggered by story events and not by player interaction. Even though it is scripted, it's still an effective storytelling device by showing Batman's hard work through the damage he's endured. 
Every Arkham game has done this. So again, I ask, why hasn't more action games adopted this feature? Before you mention it, yes, I know that many games show blood on the character or brain soaking through the clothes, but rarely do they go to the levels that these games have done. I wish more games did. It's the kind of subtle detail that immerses the player far greater than seeing the same spotless character walk away from every action scene. Cool guys may not look at explosions, but the coolest guys walk away with scars to tell the tale. Cool guys don't look at explosions. They blow things up, then they walk away.